Dane got all excited and tore these carburetors apart and now there's all these little bits and pieces and I don't know where they go and uh, earlier he told me he's like I can't figure out where all these springs go and I'm like Dane that spring is for a Honda CT90 it's not from the Volvo Thank so goodness. we're in for a rough night <laughs> we'll probably start by getting the throttle shaft put in with the throttle plate the important bit here is that these throttle shafts were badly worn and so there was a lot of play mm -hmm. um, when you put them in they even with the new bushings in the carburetors they they rattle yep. around a lot so we had a machine shop drill out these holes put new bushings in them and when we put the new shafts in there's no play so i'm going to stick that guy through there then we need a throttle plate and normally, too, if you're rebuilding dual carburetors, it's a good idea to uh, take them apart individually. And then you always have one to reference as you put it back together. The issue here is both carburetor throttle shafts were pretty badly worn, and so we had to take both carburetor bodies into the machine shop to get them bored out. And we're going to have to drill this little thing to accept the little tapered pin that holds it on. So it's all lined up here. That went through. Oh, actually, I'd say that doesn't look half bad. <laughs> I did not expect that. A bit late to ask, maybe, but are there any instructions that came with the Oh, yes, kit? there are. Where did I put those? Here we go. Now this at least business. should give us some diagrams and stuff for how stuff goes together. Now we should point out that we have already assembled one of these, and it took us, oh, two or three hours on the first go, and a lot of taking it back apart again and trying to figure out what order stuff goes together in because we had to take both carburetors apart to send the bodies off to the machine shop to have new bushings put in. Okay, now that we have the butterfly valve in, there's this little arm that goes on the side and eventually that arm will connect to a cable. Next up, we need to assemble the float bowl. Um, we have a new needle valve here. This guy's got to go like that. Let's see, kind of overkill on punch sizes here. Okay, I would say that's seated. Get a gasket. Okay, all right. So now we With the float bowl assembled. Install this guy. Go on the side here. And one of the mistakes we made last time is we added a bunch of linkages on this other side before installing the float bowl, but those get in the way of this bolt. Now that we have the float bowl on, we can install the jet, right? Yep. The jet is interesting because it sits inside of this collection of hardware. The jet fits tightly inside of this brass piece, but the brass piece is inside of another collar that's a little bit loose. So inside the bottom of the carburetor, the jet can move a little bit side to side and that allows you to get the needle valve going into the jet just so. And the goal is that the needle valve going into the jet allows it to fall and make that nice metallic clunk. We want to loosely install the jet. Maybe this is a good time to look in our uh, carburetor kit instruction manual. As everyone knows, the way you do this is you scan the pages till you find a picture that looks like what you're working on, and if the picture isn't there, then none of the words are going to be useful. <laughs> oh, this is what adjusts the height of the jet. Remember? Right. So we want the height of the jet to be just below the inside surface of the so carburetor. A, a gauge. One thing that we should note 
is because these carburetors were made by a British company back in the 60s, technically all the hardware on these is Whitworth, but uh, we don't have Whitworth hard wrenches and tools, so we're just making do with the closest fit. It's a learning experience. Even the second time, who knew? <laughs> Stumbling through once was not enough to be an expert. No. Well, the first time we centered the jet by just trial and error, like we saw recommended in a video. Not so much by trial and error, but by like trial and error and error and error and error and error and error. Yes. Okay, so there is the jet centering pin installed in the piston. So that goes in there, and then what this does, this falls down into the jet holder. Oh, there it fell in. We snug that guy up. Okay, nope, not quite, because we can't quite pick that up very easily yet. So this is the process we were talking about earlier with the trial and error and error and error. So what we need to do is get it just like this we need to then counter hold. If we put a wrench on here and counter hold that. I mean, it's not perfect, but it does go in and it, out. It does, but I can feel it shift over a little bit. Oh man, look at that. Drops in nicely, doesn't it? It drops in nicely. And that is the throttle, see it pushes the jet up and down. Now, last thing, or one of the last things, we need to go ahead and bend these little screws out. And now we need to put some oil in. And that is basically like a shock absorber. Basically that means that when you floor the throttle, it doesn't just dump huge amounts of fuel into the engine right away. We should be ready to bolt the carburetors up to the car, nope. which is hugely anticlimactic because it's not ready to start. <laughs> it's one step closer though. One step closer. <laughs>